We're going to go to Prophetess Vanessa and see if she can open up with the word of prayer for us on the day. And the next voice after that will be none other than Prophetess Doralene Davis. Amen. God bless you, Prophetess Vanessa. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you on the day for all that you have done. Thank you for what you are about to do, God. We open up our ears and our hearts, and we're ready to receive a word from you, God, like never before, God. God, we ask that you give a peace in the midst of this word, God, to give an understanding in the midst of this word, God. Let not one of your words fall now, God, but it shall be sent forth and accomplished what you are sending out to do. Hallelujah. Hear, God, and be attentive to your word, God, that not only that they be a hearer of it, but they'll hearken and they'll move and they'll do what your word is. And set forth for on the day, God, that you will get the praise and the glory and the honor that is due on this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, woman of God. I'm trying to find. we got a lot of callers on here. I'm trying to find Prophetess Darlene. God bless you, woman of God. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and good afternoon. God bless Amen. everyone. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for this topic. I thank God for this broadcast. I thank God for you, Pastor Bernard. I truly thank God for what he's doing in your life as well as so many others. I thank God for you giving birth to this ministry. I just thank God for connecting with you. You can't connect with everybody, but I thank God for this connection. And I truly give honor to God on this afternoon. I give honor to the Most High God. I just thank him for another opportunity to lift him up. Hallelujah. Another opportunity to praise him. Every time we wake up in the morning, we should just thank him. Every time we get a chance, we should magnify the name of the Lord. I just thank him. I praise him this afternoon. Oh, I give him praise. He's so worthy to be praised. I love him. And every time we think about it, we should just lift our hands and just give him a wave off. Just give him some kind of salute, some kind of praise to say we just honor him because he is so worthy. I truly give honor to you, Pastor Bernard, once again. I give honor to Sister Ruby in her absence. I give honor to each and every one in their respectable places. I thank God. It's an honor to have both of my spiritual daughters on today, Prophet Vanessa and Prophet, um, Pastor Sandra Nelson. I just give honor to them and each and every one of you that took the time to even come on today. I love you all, and I give honor to you, and I give honor to Apostle Johnson um, and Evangelist um, Williams. I give honor to them and their ministry and so many others. I tell you, I just thank God I'm excited, a little nervous, but I'm excited what God is doing and what he's going to do on today. As he gave me the word, I just thank God for his presence. And the prayer has already rendered, but I just ask God to continue to, Heavenly Father, just word my mouth, God, let the power and the rain come down, God. Oh, God, let us all be changed on today, God, and rearranged on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Let me not say nothing that you didn't tell me to say to these, your people. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this ministry. God, we ask, and here we are. Fill us up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me decrease while you increase in the name of Jesus. Amen. I was trying to get in touch with you, um, Pastor Bernard, if it's okay. You know, um, I would like um, Pastor um, Sandra Nelson to read for me, my spiritual daughter. And her line is 302, if that's okay with you. She's going to read for me. Yes, okay. 302. Okay, God bless. All you right, just fun? a moment. Let me find her. No, because I'm trying to figure. I'm figuring out. Okay, if you don't, if it's, you have another three or two, then we're in trouble. Because I'm like, okay, what's her last two digits? <laughs> I'm trying to think right now. Okay, I have her. Is this her three or two last four zero three seven nine? Yes, yes, ma'am. yes, yes. Okay, seven, and this yes, is Pastor. Is. Yes. Pastor Sandra. Sandra, Sandra. All right. Sandra Nelson. Yes. 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 Okay, is you're that okay with open. you? Um, yes, Pastor ma'am. Bernard? Okay, yes. God bless, because, you know, uh, I be tongue-tied in these words and these um, uh, letters and things, and I get tongue-tied and I be going. And I want everybody to hear what thus says the Lord today. I don't want anything to hinder and nothing to hold us back, because God is going to say something to each and every one of us 
not just y'all but me. So, um, Pastor Sandra Nelson, I thank God for you to take at this short notice to take time out of your busy schedule to greet us and to meet us, and I am hoping that God shall meet you extra. And if we can turn to Ruth, the chapter 1 in Ruth, chapter 1 in Ruth. And we're going to skim through because of the time's sake and, um, you know, um, we're going to just skim through because of time's sake, but we want to definitely let the Lord have his way. Amen. And I'm going Amen. to sing a song, if it's okay with y'all. Y'all just bear with me. Don't hear my right voice, hear the voice way. of the Lord. I just want to, first of all, can I just take a minute to give him some praise? Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank I you, thank him because he's Hallelujah. worthy. Hallelujah. 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 I thank him because he's just great. Hallelujah. Mm. Do anybody out there know how great God is? Hallelujah. Do anybody know the, the topic is filling our purpose? Hallelujah. Filling the will of God and letting God have his way in our life. Uh, filling the will of God for our life. Hallelujah. And God is going to fulfill his purpose in our life if we just let him. Mm. So I just thank God. This afternoon, uh, oh, because he's going to fill us on today. Uh, it was a day for each and every one of us to be here on today. So I thank him. Uh, I praise him this afternoon. Uh, I lift him hallelujah. up, hallelujah, for the purpose in my life. Uh, the enemy tried to distract me today. Uh, all day long, mm. things have been going on. But I heard through the day with some praise reports uh, through my daughters. Uh, let me know. Uh, keep on praying. Praying changes things. Uh, and things begin to work. Uh, so I had to. Lift up my hand and say thank you. Thank you for my spiritual children. Thank you for the people around me. Thank you, God, for the enemies. And I pray mm. for the day. Hallelujah. Because, see, when you go through some things, it's just for the purpose of God. And he's still filling the will of our life. Hallelujah. Even when times look dark and blue and gray and uh, whatever, and it seems down and things seem like it's not going to happen, you still got to lift your hands and say hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. You still got to give God praise anyway because huh? he's going to work it out huh? anyhow. You heard the song, and the last song was he's working it out. Huh? He's working on our behalf. So I thank him today. No matter what you're going through, I just want to encourage somebody before we start. Huh? In case they don't catch anything in the word, but I'm hoping. And somebody catch something in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage somebody, keep on going on anyhow. Keep looking to the hills from which your help come from, and your help come from the Lord. Keep praising them. Don't stop praising them. Don't stop lifting up the name of Jesus, because uh, he's going to turn things around in your life. Uh, this is just a light thing. This is just for a season. He said, I'm bringing you up, and I'm bringing you out. So keep praising me. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. So I just want to say praise him, hallelujah, in season and out of season. He's working it out for your good. He's working it out on your behalf. He's working it out in your life, hallelujah. So I just want to say that today, be encouraged and watch what God will do. Be encouraged and watch him turn things around because a promise is a promise. Oh, yeah. And I'm yeah. talking to oh, someone yeah. on today. You. He is a man that he cannot lie. Hallelujah. Mm. And if he said it, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. See, men may tell you, I'll be there with you. Uh, and it, and it wound up leaving you. They didn't mean no harm. They really, at the time, might have said they'll be there with you, and they, and they got your back, Pastor Bernard. And many have came, and many have left this ministry, and many have left you. But God is there, and he'll be there Hallelujah. from the beginning to the end. He'll be there. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll be there to the end of time. So why not praise him? Why not lift him up? That's why you got to praise, Pastor Bernard, in season and out of season. It's mm. not predicated on what you're going through and how you feel. Come on, and some man. of you out there got to praise. Uh, and I heard Sister T on the line, you know, you called her name, I think you called her name, uh, and she got to praise. And so many others got to praise anyhow, mm. no matter what's going on. And don't think God ain't going to bless you through the praise. Don't think God uh. ain't going to bless you through the prayer. Don't think God ain't going to bless you for being humble. Don't think, because it says, if you be humble, God will exalt you in due season. That was the word mm-hmm. last week about humbleness. Where each week, these topics are something else. They're really towering. Yes, they're really anointing and changing my life. Hallelujah. They're strengthening me. But don't think God ain't going to do what he said he's going to do. So I'm telling somebody, hold on. I had to say that loud so they can hear hear me. Hold on, because God is going to bring you up and out. God is going to change some situations in your life. Hallelujah. This year is not over yet, but watch what God is going to do, even in the middle of the year, even towards the end of the year. Hallelujah. I know you've been through some things, says the Lord, but I've been there, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to change things around for my glory, says the Lord. And God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And I want to sing this song. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, blessed Savior. I surrender all. Hallelujah. You have to surrender all today. I surrender all. Does anyone surrender all today? I surrender all. Hallelujah. to Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender all. Hallelujah. I surrender all. Oh, not to man, not to woman, not to boy, not to girl. I surrender all to Jesus. Blessed Savior, I surrender all today. And we're talking about filling the will of God for your life. That means you have to surrender all. That means you have to forget about yourself and walk in the will of the Lord. That means you have to come up out of the spiritual, your fleshly man, and walk into the spirit. That means you have to let your things go that you think and what you want to do. And you have to think in the will of the Lord, which way you want me to go, God? You, which, what, what you want me to do, God? What do, what's the will of my life? What you want me to do, God? That means your ears have to be open. Your heart has to be ready to receive what God has for you. And as we read, we're going to be reading. Now, I'm going to be reading, coming from the King James Version. I'm not sure what version um, Pastor Sandra Nelson is coming from, but when I read it, I came from the King James Version. And Pastor Nelson, are you there? I don't think our line is open. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Nelson? Okay, she must have dropped. Okay, she did drop. Uh, she's at the bottom. Okay, there she is. Hello? Okay. Praise, praise the Lord, Pastor Nelson. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry about that. I said the devil is a liar. I am here. All right, all right. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we thank, thank God for you. And I don't know what version you'll be reading out of. Thank God. God bless you this afternoon, daughter. I, I, I love you, and um, I'm so glad that you can do this for Mother. I feel like we're all together, and that's a blessing. And I thank God mm-hmm. for this opportunity once again. And I'm reading from um, Ruth Chapter 1, the King James Version. And do you okay. happen to have the King James Version yourself, or is it another version you'll be reading from? Mother's NIV. Okay, that's fine. And um, can read chapter 1, verse 1 through 5 for us. I would appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Okay, Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem of Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he, his wife, and his two sons. The man's name was Emelech. And Nimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi, and his two sons were named Milan and Shilion. They were Ephrathites, Ephrathites from Bethlehem of Judah. They went to the country of Moab and continued there. But Elimelech, who was Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha, Orpa, and the name of the other, Ruth. They dwelt there about ten years, and Melan and Shilion died also, both of them. So the women or the woman was their two sons and her husband. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. We'll be talking about today showing the will of God for your life. Amen. And that is the subject for this week. And my theme is, if I had to have a theme, you must feel the will of God. You must. It's a must. That you must be in alignment at this time. You must be in order. You must hear the instructions of the Lord. It's very important. You must. You must. It's important. It's a 911 that we walk in the will of the Lord, that we fulfill his purpose at this time. We we do what God has called us to do because God has a great work for us to do, each and every one of us. It doesn't matter what position you are, what title you are. There is a work for each and every one of us. It doesn't matter who you are, but there is a work for us, and we must do the work. We must 
not waste time anymore. We must walk in the will of the Lord. We must walk into the season God has called us to walk into. Amen. And and I just wanted to give you a little history because I'm I know this story that a lot of you have heard on um, this story, Ruth. And it's usually a love story, but I'm going to speak on it today as obedience today, as obedience because God is calling us to be obedient. We can't walk in the feel, the feel the will of God's will for our life if we're not walking in obedience to the Lord and we're not following the instructions he gives us. Your instructions may not be my instructions. My instructions may not be Pastor Bernard's instructions. We all have instructions, and we have to follow the instructions God has us called. We can't tear from those instructions. We can't do what we want to do or do half of the instructions. We have to fulfill the instructions God gives for us for our lives. Amen. And so, like I said, a lot of people know this story as a love story, but God had gave me this story in so many ways of how we need to be obedient to catch the blessings and to get the blessings of God. And so if we fulfill the will of God for our lives, God is going to bless us. Those things we have asked for, everything will come in line, but we have to stay focused on what God has called us to do. Um, and as um, Ruth, you know, um, and I don't want to go ahead of myself. I'm trying to not go ahead of myself. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Um, because I'm ready to just take off. But I'm going to try to ask God to help me because I feel the power of God to God be the glory. And she's going to also, Pastor Nelson is also going to read for me, and then I'm going to go over a couple things. Um, read for me in Chapter 2. Still giving you a little history for those that didn't remember the story or are not familiar with the story or need an update of the story. Um, Chapter 2, she's going to read verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And verse 13, and she's going to read verse 13 and verse 14. And verse one, thirteen. Yes. Thirteen and fourteen? Yes. Okay. Chapter two, verse thirteen and fourteen. Then yes. she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken to the heart of your maidservant, though I am not as one of your maidservants. And at me Mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and eat of the bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. And she sat beside the reapers, and he passed her some parched grain, oh. and she ate until she was satisfied, and she uh-huh. had some left. Amen. I want to comment on that, but I'm going to let her continue to read and close, and then I'm going to wrap it all up while the Lord is going to give me what to say. I'm not going to do anything but just open my mouth to God be the glory. Um, but as she was reading, I was touched when she was talking about satisfying, but I'm going to try to um, let her go ahead. In the last chapter, is chapter 4, if you're following along with us, it's still Ruth, chapter 4, and she's reading 13, verse 13, 14, and 15, and then she will be finished. And I thank you very much, daughter, one today. Verse chapter 4, um, chapter 4, verse 13, 14, and 15. And that is our closing, and I'll be closing with that. And on 15, she will, I'm going to ask her to repeat that on um, 15 again when I finish. Okay. Verse so that's 13. verse um, 4, chapter 4. four. Verse 13, 14, and 15. And I'm going to ask you to repeat um, 15. Okay. All right. Chapter 4, verse 13. So Boaz Mm -hmm. took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord caused her to conceive, and she bore a son. And the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord. Oh. who has not left you this day without a close kinsman. Mm-hmm. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher and supporter in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you 
then mm. seven sons has borne him. And verse 15 again, and may he be to you a restorer of life oh. and a nurturer and supporter in your oh. old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is mm-hmm. better to you than seven sons, has borne him. My mm. God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Pastor John for Nelson reading that. And I'm just saying, God, have your way right now because so much was in that chapter. And this is Ruth, and it's like I said, this is a love story, but God told me it's about when you be obedient. And he gave it to me um, several times, um, reference to being obedient. And when you be obedient, you can get the fruit of the lamb. And how she said, you know, she was, she didn't have to follow her mother-in-law. It wasn't her mother. It was her mother-in-law. And she said, your God will be my God. And she said, I'll go where you go. And no matter what was going to happen, she wasn't even looking at in the natural what could have, have happened, meaning that whatever her mother-in-law was going to face, she was going to cover her and face it too. Amen. And it meant she, wherever she went, she was going to go. She wasn't looking for a diamond. She wasn't looking for gold. She wasn't looking for. She wasn't looking for that. She was just wanted to serve her mother-in-law. She just wanted to bring to her mother-in-law. She just wanted to connect with her mother-in-law. And what are you saying, um, child of God? I'm saying that sometimes we just have to sit and serve, serve our pastors, our leaders. And as you serve, you shall be blessed. And as I'm touched today that both of my daughters are here today, and it's, I'm seeing my fruit, and meaning that when you put in prayer, prayer still works, and prayer just change things. Amen? And when you begin to pray and labor for someone, you feel the connection. You can call on them in the midnight hour. You can call on them in the last moment. And we can call on Jesus all the time. And so as staying with this story, as she began to follow her mother, out of, mother-in-law out of obedience, she got blessed more than she could even imagine. Um, she began to, to get blessed. And as she took the instructions from her mother-in-law, we got to follow instructions sometimes of our leaders, and um, we got to of all the time of our leaders if they, as they walk in God, if they're walking in God. We got to follow the instructions of the Lord, amen. We got to do what God has called us to do. And filling the will of God for our life, sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it may hurt. Sometimes it may be painful. Sometimes it may be discouraging to us. We think, or we may not understand, why we got to go here, God? Why we got to go there, God? Why we got to do that, amen? We may not understand, but if we follow God and we let God lead us, I didn't understand why I had to come to North Carolina. I wanted to stay in Philadelphia. Some of us got to get up out of our comfort zones. Some of us got to go to new places in the spirit as well as the natural. Some of us got to come up, and and the reason why some of us are not being blessed because are we following God's will for our life? Are we trying to follow the will of someone else's life? Are we doing what God has called us to do? Because all of us have a purpose. All of us have a purpose in, in our um, in our life. And it's important that we feel the will of God's life for our life. And are we doing what God has called us to do? And at the time he has called us to do it. Because see, if you come 20 days late or 20 years late, it may be too late to fulfill the promise what God has called us to do. Timing is everything. And timing is important. She didn't say, well, I'll follow you. You know, Ruth didn't say, well, Naomi, I'm going to follow you 20 years from now. I'll get back with you. She could have said, well, I don't know where you're going. I don't even know if it's going to work out well. Where are you going? I don't think she didn't think about it. Sometimes we can't just even think about what God wants us to do. We just got to go. You know, Pastor Bernard had to take a, a serious trip. And she had to go back to her own um, home, her home where she was born and raised. She didn't have time to think. Well, maybe God, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And uh, she didn't even have time for that. She she just followed the will of God for her life. And it may have been a little scary for her, a little fearful, but she said, "I trust you, God." And that's what God mm-hmm. is saying to us today. We got to trust Him. We got oh, to yeah. lean to Him. We got to acknowledge him in all our ways. We got to know, well, God, I don't know what to do. Hallelujah. I don't know which way to go, God. And even if our friends don't go, 
Even if oh. our family don't go, it's nice to have ah. somebody to go with you. You know, like I said on this broadcast today, it's so nice to have my children. It's nice to have Pastor Bernard. I know she's praying for me and so many others. It's nice, but if nobody don't pray with you and oh. pray for you, you still got to go. And nobody's You're in welcome. your corner, you still got to go. I had Hallelujah. to come down to North Carolina, and I thought I was coming for one reason, and I thought I had somebody in my corner. But God said, I'm going to show you who I am. You just got to trust in me. And when you don't know what to do, you got to trust in God. You can't look at mm. this thing in the natural. See, me, a room just followed Naomi. She knew that she was going to be all right. She knew her mother wasn't going to leave. Her mother-in-law wasn't going to leave her in a trap, leave her wrong. But she didn't look at it in the natural. She said, I'm just going. And sometimes mm. you just got to pick up and go, go in and ask, mm. go in the spirit, even when you don't feel well in your body sometimes. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just got to go. And when God say go, you know, Sister T may, you know, have some business to take care of, but sometimes God tell her go to the left, go over there and witness to those people. Some souls may be over there while you saying, I don't right. want to go there right now, God. I don't got time to go there. I got to go to store, you know, and I got to go to work, <laughs> And I talked about Martha and Mary, and I always talk about them. We got to be about God's business at this hour more than ever. We can't be saying, oh, I got to do this and do that. Sometimes we got to slow down so that we can hear God, so that we know the direction for our life. We know what God is calling for us at this season and at this time for our life. But if we running here, there, and everywhere and running where people send us, not where God wants us to go, amen, we won't hear the call of what God wants us to do. So sometimes we have to take that time and slow down and say, God, what would you have me to do for my life? What would you have me fulfill for my life? Where would you have me to go, God? And listen to him and be obedient. It's very important to be obedient. Um, Ruth got blessed because she was obedient. Not only did she not look in the natural, she just walked in the spirit. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, Pastor Bernard didn't know what she was going to do, but everything is lined up and set up for her down there because she was oh, yeah. obedient. And, and and she's going to have the milk and honey. She's going to have the blessings of God. And so many others are going to have the blessings because we're looking at, you know, and I hear Sister T's toy story and my story, how I just got up and left. And it was comfortable in Philadelphia, and I was around comfortable people. And I felt comfortable, and God had used me so mightily, did God be the glory. But he said, I want to take you out your comfort zone. And God is saying to us today, he's taking us out of our comfort zone. So it's not church as usual. It's not business as usual. You know, where you think you're going one place, God is going to send you another place. So I'm saying mm. to you today, get ready for what God has for you. Because, see, you want the blessings of God, and we all want to be blessed, and we are going to be blessed, and we are blessed. But to get the full blessings of God, you have to be obedient, and you have to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to lay before the Lord in prayer. You have to be willing to seek God fasting and reading the Word. You can't hear God if you're not praying and fasting and seeking seeking Him. You can't properly hear the instructions of God. If I got the television on loud, on the phone, people are talking to people at the door. I can't hear what God is saying to me. Hallelujah. Mm. I mean, my plans is not my daughter's plans. You know, what they, God has for them is for them. What God has for you is for you. And so I can't say, uh, Prophet Vanessa, what God told us to do today. The devil is a lie. I got to seek God. And see, sometimes we don't want to take that sacrifice and land before the Lord for ourselves. And mm. so sometimes, and I'm not saying anybody on this line, but I'm saying sometimes in the body of Christ, people call prophets and prophetess. I thank God that, you know, God has called me to hear, but I tell people sometimes I'm just not that deep, and, and you need to go to the Lord. Because God wants us to hear for ourselves. Ooh, it should be just a confirmation. Yeah. It should be just a confirmation. When I come back and say, thus says the Lord, it should be a confirmation. God should have already told you your plans for your life. And if you're not mm -hmm. hearing from God, you need to be fasting and praying so that you can hear God clearly. And God is saying, and I'm trying not to get emotional and get up and get worked up because I feel God, to God be the glory, but I'm trying to take this slow so somebody can hear something today. And God is saying as Ruth began to walk and follow Naomi, and sometimes we, it's, it's, it's a struggle when we go through some things. 
It should not be because when we're seeking God, we should know that he's going to bring us out. But we go through those storms and we go through those trials and tribulations and some things knock us almost to our to the ground and some of us have been knocked to the ground and some of us could not hardly breathe in the natural nor the spirit. And I can relate to that. Couldn't breathe the, the last thing I went through. And I thought I was never going to get up and rise to God be the glory. God rose me up for such a time as this because if there was, a purpose for my life. There was a feeling, a feeling the will of God for my life. And I thank God that he led me to this broadcast where there was healing to take place. God is saying we got to get delivered from some things of the past before we can even walk into the future, into the things of the future. And as the woman of God has had people on talking about uh, healing and different things, um, God is saying it's time for us to be healed from the brokenness, that we can go forth and do the will of God. And as um, the crusades are coming up, God wants us to be washed and purged and cleansed and delivered from some things, some yokes to be destroyed, some strongholds to be pulled down, that we can walk fully, that we can feel the will of God for our life, the purpose, the whole purpose, what God has for us that he wants us to do. And Ruth, began to feel the purpose. She may not even knew what was going to happen, but she was faithful to her mother-in-law. We have Ah, to be faithful to what God calls us to do. And, you know, be faithful to, you know, I'm faithfully coming on this ministry, not because of Pastor Bernard, that's that's, that's a part of it, but because of God. He has ordained Mm -hmm. me to come on this broadcast. Mm -hmm. And one of those days where I said I'm not coming on because I've been through this and that, and I don't want to put any spirits on her or on the people. I can't go on today, God. I'm so broken up. I'm so hurt, God. I just can't make it today. And I know somebody out there felt like that. But God said, go on, and I will strengthen you. So we can't right. go on our own strength. God will make us go, go forth and, we, and help us to go forth. He'll help us to endure if we just trust him, and we just wait on him and be of good courage. The word said be of good courage. Meanwhile, we're waiting. Hallelujah. We got to be of good courage. We got to praise him in season and out of season. We got to lift mm. up our hands to him and know that he is king of kings. And he brought us yeah. out of that and he'll take us out of this. Uh, and there's so many testimonies on this line and off the line. And when people go into archives today, they're going to begin to look back over their life and, and begin to think about what God has done for them. Why not praise a God like this? Why not serve mm. a God like this? Why not lift up a God like this? Yes, we're going through, but won't he bring us out? Heavenly brought yeah. us out. Hallelujah. And so God will do just that. And, um, you know, Ruth could have said, my husband is dead. I know we have had people that died in our families and, and you went through death, and many of us can relate, and some of the deaths were so painful. It may have been your mother, father, brother, sister, or husband. She could have said, oh, well, my, my husband is dead, and I got to focus on flesh. I got to focus on me. But, she, you know, she didn't focus on her. And that's why she got blessed. Amen. When we get our focus off of us and put our focus on our brother, our sister, our mother, or other people, God can reward us. Hallelujah. If I had stayed in the rut that I was in, hallelujah, if I had stayed in the mood I was in, I would have never been on New Destiny broadcast. I would never even be talking to you all today or speaking or whatever God is having me to do today because he's doing a new thing in me. He's slowing me down right now because he's saying there's something he wants me to hear. Hallelujah. Right now. So he's slowing me down mm. right now. He's doing a new thing. Because, see, this is the, he's feeling the will of, uh, I'm feeling the will of him on today. And the will right now is saying, slow it down. Just just follow me. Hallelujah. We got to just follow God. Huh? When we don't understand, we got to follow him. When Hallelujah. we do understand, we got to follow him. Because our thoughts is not his thoughts. Huh? And our ways mm. are not his ways. Huh? And we got mm. to follow him anyway. So Ruth could have stayed in her bag and said, oh, wow, wow, me. Oh, what was he, me? My husband died. And anybody mm. know that when your mother, your father, your sister and brother and your child die or your husband die, anyone knows. And Pastor Brian Nord, I know you know a death of a child, something missing, something happens when somebody mm. just attached to you that died that you're close to. And so she could have said, well, I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to go with my sister. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But she followed me on me. We got to follow those that's mm. walking holy as God is walking holy. We got to follow those leaders that's living right because in the body some leaders are not living right. Follow them as they follow God. And we got to submit ourselves and humble down sometimes uh, under the 
anointing, under, up or down. You know, it's no, no such thing as bishop this, king this. Uh, you know, when I say that, I shouldn't say it's no such thing, meaning that you may have a title of a bishop. You may have a title of an apostle. You may have a title of the fivefold ministry. But you know what? Sometimes you even have to humble down. Hallelujah. You mm-hmm. have to submit yourself. And you may have to submit yourself to a uh, brother. It may only be a brother. And God will have you submit yourself. We talked about being humble the last week. you got to humble because God don't say nowhere if you are a bishop. I'll um, result you in due season. It says if you be humble, or if you a pastor, evangelist, or whatever, it says if you be humble, I'll exalt you in due season. So this is the season that God is exalting his true people, people that have labored, people that have prayed, people that have been faithful, people that have trusted them, people that have praised them. It's in the praise. You can't get nothing if you don't praise them. It's in the praise. You got to go beyond yourself. I don't feel like praising them today. If it was the case, day of the day was definitely the day. I didn't feel like coming on today. It was a warfare today. But I know Mm. that it was a reason for today. I know if I just said one word, I know that God is pleased on today because I came Mm. up out of myself. And I came on the line and submitted myself to the leader right. and to God. And I came on today to fulfill the will of God for my life. And the mm. life today is to come about myself and come about my flesh and to preach when I want to preach and preach in season and out of season when I want to and when I don't. That I have to follow God when I want to and when I don't. It's not predicated on how I feel. It's not predicated on how you feel. It's predicated on what God wants for your life. And you have a purpose, mm. each and every one of you. Whether you have a position or a title, you have a purpose. And, and every one on the line is important. And it is important to God. Huh? And there's a purpose. Huh? And he has instructions for each and every one of us. Your instructions are not my instructions. But we have instructions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes our instructions come together. And we work together on one accord and one spirit. And that's when the power of God can fall down. Hallelujah. Even the more. But God is saying if we don't praise him, and if we don't pray, and we don't fast, and we don't read our word, and we don't seek him. Huh? This is the hour mm. we must lay before him and seek right. him like never before. This is the hour we must forget about our flesh and forget about what we want to do. It's been mm. many times past, but no, I wanted to close it down properly and didn't want to oh, come yeah. on. But oh, she yeah. came on with a praise. She came ah, on with a prayer. Lord she came God. on trusting God. And as many times as my daughter is reading, she can relate and spend many times that she may not have wanted to say anything. She has a beautiful mm. voice and she can sing, and as anointing mm. as God is going to use her mightily through her singing, through her preaching, through her teaching, and she has Hallelujah. so many things she's been through, but now this is the time she's not on here by asking a chance today. God said it's time for her to fill the will of God for her life. It's time, God said he has a ministry in her belly, and he has a ministry mm. in your belly, and he has a ministry in my belly, and he has a ministry in their belly for such a time as this. God is saying no more. Time out for playing around. Right. Time out for oh, playing church. Bad. Time out for wasting time. Time out for mm. excuses. Time out for not walking in the will of the Lord. Time out saying, I don't want to go. I can't do. I can't do this. Mm. I can't do Come this. On. I could do all things, not some things. All ah, things to fight that strength in me. But I can't do nothing without him. If I came on this line to not today without him, oh, I would be no purpose. It would be no oh, need for uh, doing the will of God for my life. Uh, but since I came on with Jesus, uh, I said, God, ah, I can't do anything. Geez. I won't do anything without you. Oh, God, if you don't say go uh, and you don't say speak, I won't speak. Uh, so God is saying when he tells us to speak, uh, we have to speak. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it talks about there's a time well, silence, to keep silent, and there's a time to speak. God saying some of us need to speak that hasn't been speaking. Mm. Some of us need to speak huh, that has not been talking. He said it's time, and I'm saying, God, you know, I'm not ready, and I was pulling. I'm not ready. I don't know why the woman of God calls me to preach on the line. But I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God, but oh, I understand it a little bit now. That's what I was saying uh, yesterday and last week, and, and, and when she even asked me to come down. I thank God because God is bringing me up, and he's bringing me out, and he's All bringing right. us up and out. And it's not what we think. It's about what he wants to do because, see, your voice may have some power to a certain soul that my voice don't. 
don't have. And her voice Come may on. have to reach a nation that I can't reach. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. It's a time for us to speak the word. We all yeah. are needed. It's one body, one mind. We all are needed in this body. We all got to come together and pray for our brothers and sisters. We all got to come together and submit ourselves from time to time and be humble that God can exalt us in due season. He says this Hallelujah. is a time where he's going to bless us like never before. He said, I heard you cry. The woman of God got a testimony of waiting 21 years. And she stood by that prayer. And I know some days that she didn't want to pray, some days she got weary in praying. And I'm talking to somebody else. I might be using the woman of God, Pastor Bernard, for example. But it's somebody that was praying something a long time. And God is saying today, hear me, hear me in the spirit. Uh, Oh, Mama Hashanda, God is saying today, I have not forgot about thee. I have not Uh, forgot about the prayer that you prayed. It seems Mm. like I forgot about it. But God said, I have not forgot. And I promise is a promise. He said, I'm saying on. on today. I heard huh. you the first time you cried, and I show answer. And see, your speedily is not his speedily, and your suddenly is not his suddenly. But he said, I show move. Hallelujah. Ah, I'm receiving Lord it for myself, God. and I show move Ooh, on your behalf. And they show yeah. me. Ha, my glory in you. You said, why mm. did I have to go through this sickness? Why did I have to go through this trial? Why did I have to lose this loved one? Hearing me today, God said, was for my glory. It wasn't for you. Oh, my it was for Lord. my glory. And it was for the ministry that you can feel the will of God like ah, you Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It was for such a time as this. He said, watch what I do. I I know what the enemy's doing. He said, I'm talking about what the devil is doing. But watch my glory, saith the Lord. Watch what I do. See, Ruth, she follows uh, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she walked and she followed her. And I, I could kind of picture it in the spiritual room. She walked, and they had to go through some things, and it may have been dry out there on the mm. where they were going. And it might have been kind of tiresome where they were going. How did you hit me in the spirit of somebody? <laughs> Hallelujah. And it may Come be on. a little, it was a little, um, they didn't have much people maybe with them. Uh, you know, Ruth didn't have a husband no more. Hallelujah. And she didn't have the things that she thought she would need, and she didn't know what was going to take place. But she kept on walking anyhow. Come on, she kept come on. on following her, her, her mother-in-law. She kept trusting them. I kept on mm-hmm. walking. I didn't understand what was going on down here. I thought I could depend on men, but I found out her. it says put no trust in men. And hey. I found out that I had to lean to Jesus. And so at this hour, we can't lean to people. It's good that we All have right. Around us, but some people are going to be around us just so they can see the glory of ah, God. But God is yeah. disconnecting you from some people, also. Hallelujah! Mm. God is doing a shift and a change, even on today, as we're right here, sitting here in the presence of God. To God be the glory. He said, "I'm working some things out even now on your behalf." Mm. And I hear that song. It was the last song that was played, and I hear it in my ear. And I just got to say, hallelujah, thank mm, Jesus, mm, hallelujah, mm. hallelujah. Glory. I thank God, hallelujah, because he's thank working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. He's, he's, here. Working, he's it working it out. on your behalf. He's working ah, it out on your behalf. God. He's changing things around. He said, why mm. not praise me? Hallelujah, because it's already done. Well, I don't see it. It's already done. Just walk it out. I don't mm. understand it, but just walk it out. Mm. Trust me, says the Lord. You know, we can wait on the bus, we can wait on the doctor, we can wait on this, and we can wait on that. Why won't we wait on King of Kings and Lords of Lords? Oh, that place. Well, it's been a long time. Well, Pastor Bernard said 21 years. I came mm. in on the end and got a chance to get the blessings. I came on at the end. Some of us going to come on at the end and get blessed. Hallelujah. Mm. Well, I thank mm. God. I, I, sorry she had to go through that labor. Um, but that was her baby that she had to carry. But I came in on the end and seen the bait. I said, one more push. Hallelujah. All one right. more push. Yeah. I got to push. One more push. And I got to ah, see the baby. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. And it's, ah, it's marvelous in God's sight. Hallelujah. And I thank God Ooh, for what he's Lord. doing in her life. And I got to see some things, and I'm going to see some things in the natural when I come down into God be the glory, what God is mm, doing. Mm, and I tell you, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk, or dance, or what I'm going to be doing, but I'm going to be, see, we got to praise him when others get blessed. Hallelujah. Ah, mm. So that we can get our blessings. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't even understand why we're in a situation that we're in, why we're on this line, why we're on this 
And sometimes we don't understand it. But God said this was a appointed time, even on today. He's setting us up. He's setting us up for some new things. He's setting us up to be blessed. All we got to do is follow the instructions of him. All we got to do is be obedient to him. All we got to do is keep looking to the hills. We can't look to the left. We can't look to the right. We got to look to the hills. We can't look Mm. at mother, father, brother, sister, cousin. We got to look to the hills from which our Mm. help comes from. We got to trust him in season and out of season. We got to say, God is God. God, I don't know what to do, but I'm not going to complain. I'm coming with a praise. I'm coming with an anyhow ah, praise. I'm Jesus. coming with a bless God praise. I'm coming with a thank you anyhow. I don't know what to do about this situation, but I'm trusting mm-hmm. you. I'm leaving it at the altar, and I'm trusting you no matter what. I'm going to keep walking it out in Jesus' Come on. name because I know you're going to bring me through. And mm. then she began to follow Naomi. Hallelujah. She could have followed others. She could have went back to where she was, or she could have stayed right where she was at. And he only tried to encourage her, you know, y'all go ahead, and, you know, but there was a blessing on the other side for her. Mm. Hallelujah. Do how many people know if you just come on up and come on out a little bit farther, come just pray a little bit more, fast a little bit more, pray a little more, it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Mm. On the other side for you. Oh, yeah. There's a blessing in a certain place for you. You know, I didn't get my blessings. I got to, to God be the glory, see the fruit of the prayers in Philadelphia. But God said, now I'm bringing you on his side. Yes, where the witches and the warlocks are. Yes, where the people want to talk about you. People are going to lie uh-huh. to you. And I know everybody can relate to that. But this is where I'm going to bless you. That's what he's saying to you, Pastor Vanoy. Right here right. when you first glory. was here, when you was in your sin. Now they see yes, you coming Lord. back as Hallelujah. a new creature. Now they see you Thank coming you. back in the presence of God. Now they see the oh. glory of God. See, we are walking testimonies. Hallelujah. We are Thank walking you, testimonies. See, nobody, some, some people are not going to want to hear the word. And some people are not going to want it because they've been so hurt, so wounded, so down, tried it. Because I know when I was in a certain place, I didn't want to pick up my Bible. Oh, I don't know if none of you ever been there. Hallelujah. But I thank God I was still praying because I was praying and praying and praying. Yes, don't God. stop praying no matter what. Hallelujah. And so people need to see you as the light. We ought to be the oh, light. Hallelujah. Your name, and we Jesus. walking around downtrodden, my mama, shot, all depressed. What will they see? What will they see? Uh, Are we feeling the will of God for our life? No, we're not. Mm. And so this is the topic, filling the will of God for our life. And so if they look at us and they see darkness, and they see our heads downtrodden, and we're talking, I don't know what I'm going to do, they're listening. You'd be surprised who's listening to you as you go out to the stores, as you go out to your different routines and your different places. You'd be surprised who's watching you. You'd be surprised who's listening to you. So God is saying we got to be the light. And you know how they say, don't let them see you sweat? Yes, we do, ah, but don't let them see you don't sweat. Don't let them see you. Don't let them see those Ooh, tears geez. that you cry in the midnight hour that God is saying, I'm about to turn it around. Hallelujah. Turn it around, And turn your God. midnight into joy. Hallelujah. Yes. If you just follow Hallelujah. me. If you just walk into my will. If oh, you just trust Lord me. If you just wait on me. Hey, my Thank mama, you if you follow the instructions of me. How do you? I hear you, God. How do you? If you just lean to me, not what you think, mm. not what others think. Because, see, yeah. some people get you all tripped up if you listen to people. They mm. have you all messed up into their will, what God called them to do. And remember, we we got to feel the will of God for our life. That's a personal thing. Darlene, I can help Pastor Bernard, and I want to help her. In every way I can. But I can't fulfill her purpose. I can't put them shoes on. Don't want to. She suffered for them shoes. Ah, glory to God. I can just help and come along and intercede and pray for and fast Mm. for to God. And like all each and every one of you that's on this line have done. But I can't fulfill those shoes. I can't fulfill Pastor Sandra's shoes. I can be her spiritual mother and love upon her and pray for her. But I can't fulfill Mm. her shoes. I, she got her assignment and I got mine. Yeah. And so we got Hallelujah. to stay in our own lane. Mm. Whatever that is, we got to mm. do what God mm. called us to do. And back to Ruth. Hallelujah. And as Ruth began to follow her mother, she didn't have any doubt. And nowhere in here says she had doubt and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. I don't think we should go. You know, that place, Hallelujah. we might not be blessed. 
Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, do you really know where we're going, you know me? I mean, it's hot. I'm tired. Oh, right. I'm weary. Okay, my mama's shot. I, I just... Oh, my joy is just gone. I think you're not here right. Which way are you walking? Are you walking uh, the right oh, way? Yeah. Are you really supposed to be going this way? I don't. I mean, I maybe I over ready. Even though God told me I gotta read it some more and some more and some more. I don't know what God is gonna give me the next time. To God be the glory. He's got me stuck in this story. He says everybody um, looks at this story as a love story, and yes, it is a love story. To God be the glory. But God said if she didn't follow who she was supposed to follow and was obedient. She couldn't have got blessed. She couldn't get, I keep hearing she did, couldn't got the fruit of the land. She couldn't mm. got the milk and honey. She couldn't got the mm. reward. Hallelujah. Mm. So, yes, you may be sick in your body. Yes, you may be going through some things, but it's all for God's glory. Keep on oh, walking. Oh, walk into you. the newness what God has for you. Keep on walking it out. Follow the instructions of the team. Don't get off track. Don't let anyone get you off track. If they're talking crazy, don't be around them. If they're talking mm. wishy-washy, don't be around them. So this season, we can't afford to be around a bunch of negative people. Mm. They're talking about the double this, the double that, the double double. The devil is a liar. We don't want to sing the glory of the devil because he don't need no glory. He don't get no glory. We ought to be saying oh, Jesus is. Jesus said something in the name of Jesus. When we call on that name of Jesus, great things happen. Jesus, we should be saying Jesus is Jesus that King did this, the Lord did that. We should that's how we should be magnifying and lifting them up. Hallelujah! Mm-hmm. Raise up and lift up the name of God. It wasn't to kill you. It wasn't to destroy you. It's to make you for His glory for the ministry that you had. Hallelujah! And so as Ruth followed her. And she met um, Boaz, and he was the kinsman, you know, uh, to the family. He was related to um, Naomi's uh, husband. And um, as she followed, she found favor with this um, king. And God is going to let you find favor if you follow the king, king of kings, mm. the Lord, Jehovah Jireh. If you follow the king, not 10%, but 100%. He's going to lead you. If you follow the will for your life and trust him, he says he knows that you've been crying many tears. Sometimes we say, God, do you see us? Do you want to understand what we're going through? He's not seeing you. And he says that he's going to do just what he said he's going to do. So I say follow God and walk in the will of the will of your life for God and follow him no matter how it seems. And watch him bring you up. And watch him bring you out. Ooh, and the man yeah. of God said so much on yesterday. And I'm saying Thank the God. joy of the Lord is your strength. Know that the joy, you got to have joy for that strength. Mm. And this oh, journey, yeah. we're going to need strength. Yes. Strengthen your okay. brothers and sisters. Encourage your brothers and sisters. Uh, push your brothers and sisters. Pray for your brothers and sisters. It's not about me, myself, and I. Mm-hmm. And it's not about what we feel like doing, but when we follow the will of the Lord, we shall be blessed. We shall eat the fruit of the land. We shall inherit some things. Some of us on this line has been in poverty too long. God is about to turn mm-hmm. things around. Mm-hmm. Some of us mm-hmm. have been sick too long. God is about to Come heal on. because you got a healing ministry, mm-hmm. and you can't lay hands the way you are. Some of us have been sick in our mind, and God is about to restore the mind of the people that we can preach, teach, prophesy in his name, that we can do the work. He said if we keep our mind on him, he'll keep us in perfect peace. Where, where's your mind today? On the things mm-hmm. above or the thing down? Where's your mind today? Filling the purpose of God? Do you know the purpose? If you don't know the purpose, pray for your purpose. Do you know? your purpose, and your will that you should be following. Ask God and he will tell you. Do you know what you're supposed to be doing at this season and at this time? Ask God. You can't write the vision and make it plain and run with it if you don't know the vision. Ask God. He will tell you. And it's always confirmed by someone. Mm. And in closing, I just want to say something that I want um, the woman of God to turn to, and that's Jeremiah. One and five. Jeremiah, Mm, mm, one mm. and verse five. 
<laughs> and we're familiar with that as the woman of God is turning to that. I just want to say hallelujah. Thank you hallelujah. for what he is doing. I thank God because he's restoring on today. Oh, I bless you, God. He is hallelujah. taking us to another place on today. Mm. He is strengthening on today in the name of Jesus. I'm saying speak the word over your life. Mm. Prophesy to yourself. Mm. And know that God is going to do it. It's oh, time to God. walk fully in faith. And when you walk in faith, you don't look at around you because it will get you off track. You don't look at what you see. Right now I'm sitting in my place, but if I look out the window, I see the children playing and some other things, and it could distract me from what God is telling me to, to tell you all right now. So mm-hmm. I've got to walk by faith and not by sight. I got I, Sometimes you can't even look at what's going on in the natural. Right. You just got to stay focused on what mm. keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on God. Where he wants you to go. And in closing, before she reads uh, Jeremiah 1, verse 5, before she reads that, thank you again, Pastor Nelson. Thank you again, um, Pastor Bernard, for this opportunity. Thank you again for each and every one of you. Prophet Vanessa, I thank God for you being on this line. I thank God for what he is doing even right now in our thank lives. You. I thank God because God is saying, I'm turning around for my glory. I'm changing situations. Now, if it don't happen in five minutes, don't be discouraged. If it don't happen in five, uh, five days, don't be discouraged. The one that God told you about 21, 21 years. If it don't happen in 21 days, still keep speaking it. Still keep walking uh, in it. Keep, don't keep oh trusting yeah. God. If he tell you to move in the natural, you got to move. Uh, I didn't want to move. I'm uncomfortable here. But there's a place that God wants me to be here for such right. a time as this. Thank you, Lord. That he can get the glory. So Thank if he you, tells Jesus. you to move in the natural, you've got to move. If he tells you to move in the spirit, you've got to move. Can't say I'll yeah. move tomorrow because tomorrow may be too late. It's just a coincidence ah. that I waited to the next day and it was too late. Mm. God saying, follow me. And so you, um, who said, your God will be my God? She mm. may not understand what she was saying. But she was saying, I surrender all. The song got sung. All right, all right. She was saying, I'll do it even when I don't know. I may be different and don't understand it all. You may not understand. You may came from a Catholic church. You may not have came from a holiness church or a fire baptized church. You may not even know why you're doing what you're doing, but you got to follow God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, get the Holy Ghost. If you're not saved, ask God to be saved. And if you don't have any fire, ask God to give you the fire of God. And if your fire went out, Ask God to replace your fire because you're going to need the fire for the for the feel the will of God for your life. Uh, You can't do it without the Holy Ghost, uh, and you shouldn't do it without Him. Uh, You can't do nothing without Him. But all things you can do through Christ that strengthens you. So I say today, and all that has been said, walk it out. Trust Him. Walk in the will for what God has for you. Fulfill the will. It, you might have some lonely nights. You might be tired. Mm. You might get weary. But know that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is with you. Keep Thank pushing. You, Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep trusting. And as she reads, Jeremiah um, chapter um, 1, verse 5, and this is what I want to say in closing just before she reads that. That, amen, amen. See, she got so ass. She got a love. So those that's waiting for husbands, keep on waiting. Let God give you that husband. Because it says whosoever <laughs> finds a, a, a wife finds a good thing. So you are that good thing. So wait on God and while you're waiting, fulfill the purpose of, of, you, of what God has for your life. Keep on working in the vineyard. Keep on um, putting, letting your hand be to the plow. Keep on doing what God has called you to do. If there's anyone out there waiting for a husband, hallelujah. Let, cause see, she, she just went on and did the will of God. She just went on and leaned to um, Naomi, and God blessed her beyond what she can even imagine. You are queen, and you deserve a king. So if you're waiting, wait on that king. Wait on that man of God that you can be blessed. Those that's waiting. Hallelujah. Don't rush on your ministry. Amen. Don't rush on your ministry either. Those that have ministries and God told you that ministry, sometimes it's not time for that child to be birthed spiritually. All Wait right. On God for whatever Thank you do. God bless you. And as she reads amen. one, amen. And in closing, as she reads um, one, chapter one, and verse five, Pastor Nelson, if you're still with us, if you can read that, I thank you in closing. 
Amen. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Amen. 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 I just wanted to meditate on that for myself for a minute, to God be the glory. Um, As before Ruth was even born, God knew the plan for her life. He knew greatness was for her because she would be a servant to her mother-in-law, that she would cling to her mother-in-law, that she would cling to her mother-in-law, that she would listen. And see, God already knew before we were even born in our mother's womb what we were going to be and what was the plan. So I say fulfill the will of God for your life. You know, a lot of people have left out of here without feeling the purpose you, that they had, you, God had for you. them. But I say everybody that hears the voice today, to hear under the sound of my voice, hear the Lord's voice. You must fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. You must. And it's a 911 that you can't wait 20 years later. You have to do it now is the time. As Amen. Pastor Hamilton always say, right now is the time. No more excuses, no more delays, no more hold-ups, no more looking back, no more saying I, that person could do it. You know, and I just like uh, um, just like Moses said, Eric can do it. Right, and I say, right. and, and me, I'm going to use me oh, for example. No. I said, well, why is she going to get me? She can get that one that can speak better, that one that's more educated. No, not so. God said there's a word in my mouth before my, I was even born. My mother had me in a womb, and God said I was going to be a prophetess. Before oh, I was That's even born, true. before I even knew my purpose, before I even believed that I had a purpose, before I even mm-hmm. thought I had a purpose, when people told me I didn't have a purpose, somebody out there, somebody might have told you that you was nothing. Somebody might have told you that you wasn't going to be a preacher, or you wasn't going to be a, a, a even a doorkeeper, a servant, or you wasn't going to be a pastor, you wasn't going to be a evangelist. But I, the devil is a liar. Then you have to fill the will of God for your life. If God said it, it shall be. If God did it. Oh. It shall come to pass. If God said it, it shall happen. Know that God is going to do it. Just fulfill. He's waiting on you to walk in those shoes, as the man of God said yesterday. He's waiting on you to move. He's waiting on you to pray. He's waiting on you. God is waiting on you, 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 and you. And all of us have a purpose. So God bless you. Let God bless you that you can get blessed like never before. Amen. 